Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Susie Youngberg, president of the Upper Keys Business and Professional Women. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight for the Primary Candidates Mixer. Please be aware that this event is being recorded. The primary election in Monroe County is next Tuesday, August 18th, so we are very excited to have these candidates with us tonight. They will each have an opportunity to introduce themselves in a few minutes to tell us why they should win our vote. We will be going in alphabetical order for the parties. D comes before R, so we will start with the one Democratic race, and then we will move to the Republican races in the order as they are on the ballot. Each candidate will have three to five minutes to speak, Time permitting, each candidate will also have about one minute for closing comments. I want to begin the evening by thanking and introducing the Public Policy Committee for all of their hard work putting this event together. The Public Policy Committee consists of Gina Boilini, Committee Chair, Ilya Chapman, Jill Keenert, Jackie Harder, and Deborah Walker. Thank you so much, ladies, for all of your hard work. And I'm being assisted tonight by two of the committee members, Jill Keenert, who is our current board secretary, and Ilya Chapman, our immediate past president. Ilya will be working the controls behind the scenes this evening. She'll be spotlighting the speakers, muting and unmuting, etc. And Jill will be our timekeeper. Candidates, when your name is called to speak, please virtually raise your hand. If you don't know how to raise your hand, you open the participant panel and you'll find options beside your name there. We want you to virtually raise your hand to make it easier for Ilya to find you quickly so that she can spotlight you while you speak. You will then have three to five minutes to speak. Jill will give you a time warning at three minutes and another at four and a half. At five minutes, she will announce that the time is up and we ask you to stop speaking at that time. Please be respectful of the other candidates and of the process. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and read the candidates in the order that they will be called upon, just so everyone knows who all we have tonight. Democratic candidates for State Senator District 39, Javier E. Fernandez, Daniel Dan Horton Diaz. Republican candidates for representative in Congress, District 26, Omar Blanco, Carlos Jimenez. Republican candidates for state attorney, 16th Judicial District, I'm sorry, Judicial Circuit, Mark E. Cole, Dennis W. Ward. Republican candidates for state representative 120, James Jim Vernon Mooney Jr., Rhonda Redmond Lopez, Alexandria Suarez. Republican candidates for county commissioner, District 5, Michael P. Forster, Robbie Majeska. Republican candidates for state committeemen, Stephen Hammond, Casey Cass Shu. So we have had quite a few more join us. So welcome everyone. So at this time, without further ado, we are going to begin hearing from our candidates. So up first is Democratic candidates for state senator district 39. Once again, please virtually raise your hand when your name is called. Please remember you have three to five minutes to speak. A time warning will be given at three minutes, four and a half minutes, and time will be called at five minutes. So up first is Javier E. Fernandez. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Javier E. Fernandez. I uh, have the honor currently representing the 114th District in the Florida House, uh, and I'm a proud Democrat running for the Florida Senate here in District 39. First, let me start by thanking uh, all the talented women of this organization for organizing tonight's forum and the committee for their hard work. Uh, having served on many local boards, I know uh, what a commitment it is to volunteer and spend the time and energy, invest the time and energy out of your daily life to put something like this together. So thank you for that. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'll begin with a quick resume about me. Uh, I'm a native Miamian, uh, raised in Senate District 39. Uh, proud father of two children, uh, Susanna, who is 12, Lucas, who is a 10-year-old boy. Uh, married to 15 years to my wife, Dr. Anna Maria Patino, who I met uh, in high school, was my high school prom date. Uh, so a long relationship there. Uh, we have um, been blessed to live in South Florida. And, and my reason for running is to make sure that I pass on the legacy that my parents, uh, exiles who came to this country, started anew, uh, grandparents and parents alike, pass on that legacy of opportunity to my children, make sure that we safeguard 
uh, the real treasure that is South Florida for them and for others in the future. Uh, I, I am someone I think is uniquely qualified to represent this district for a number of reasons, whether Democrat or Republican. Uh, I already represent a portion of the district, so I've been working on issues impacting the district today, even before launching a candidacy for the state Senate. My lived experience is the lived experience of many people across Senate District 39. As I mentioned, I was raised in the district first in the, in the Fountain Blue section and then the Tamiami Tamiami Lakes portion of the district. I grew up playing in the parks uh, from uh, the northern portions of the districts, the southern portion of the district in South Dade, have visited the Keys and uh, been a regular visitor to that area as well. And I you know, worshiped, worked, and uh, worked on community issues across this community for my entire uh, adult life since returning from college uh, in my early 20s. And so I understand these experiences, the struggles of uh, a failing transportation system, uh, of a government that is, uh, is not working to expand opportunity and wanna make sure that we, I do my part uh, to create opportunity and access for the future generations of uh, the district. Uh, I have a record of professional accomplishments in a wide variety of sectors. I've worked in the nonprofit sector, that's where I started my career, working on issues of community development, uh, principally encouraging our county and local governments to reinvest in disinvested communities like Florida City and Homestead uh, through delivery of dollars uh, focused on affordable housing construction. Continued that work in Washington, came back to Miami-Dade County uh, and worked across South Florida on those same issues. Uh, I served the local level for a mayor, not just for a few months, but for three and a half years, where we had success helping to transform our, our local city government, improve our parks, uh, restore our waterfront, change our zoning codes so that was actually more conducive to an environment where people could live, work, and play. And also expanding access to uh, um, uh, small businesses so that they could uh, be part of the emerging economy uh, in Miami-Dade County. So I, I have worked at both the state level now as an elected state representative and at the local level and understand the interplay and how the state uh, can impede local progress and local innovation. Uh, in Tallahassee, uh, I've been a strong advocate uh, protecting our public schools, making sure that we are uh, engaging in common sense gun reform, uh, fighting to make sure that we are preserving the uh, ecological heritage that is part of South Florida, a unique part of South Florida, and also making sure that we're expanding opportunity for working families uh, through a number of initiatives, principally through expanding a working families tax credit and also uh, providing opportunities for, for our local governments to generate more affordable housing, which is a key economic development issue for uh, our district. So my intentions are not just backed by, by those experiences in the public sector, but also 10 years of private sector experience advising clients uh, on some very complicated projects uh, across our community. So I think I bring a unique set of perspectives, one that's informed by experience in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors to this job. Uh, I have matched my, my uh, promises with action in my short term in the Florida House. Uh, I have focused uh, religiously, again, on issues of public education, public education funding, uh, making sure we've got accountability across all systems, working very hard to make sure that we are now uh, helping families recover from the impacts of COVID by helping to stem the contagion, helping our businesses access resources, helping working families access um, the benefits that they are entitled to, and also raising the specter that as we begin to reopen, we need to make sure that we have benefits that allow people to step in and out of the economy so we don't propagate the contagion further. And lastly, going forward beyond COVID recovery, I hope to work, uh, continue my focus on climate uh, resiliency, allowing the state to be a partner in investing in solutions to make our communities more resilient, uh, working to expand uh, family access on a number of key fronts in the areas of transportation, uh, affordable housing, and again, access to education, both at the primary, secondary, and higher education levels. Uh, that's what I hope to continue to work on in Tallahassee, and I would ask for your support uh, this August 18th. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Now, Daniel Dan Horton Diaz. Oh, sorry. I was waiting to be unmuted. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Dan. Most of you know me as Dan. Um, so th there are a lot of things about this district that I'm really passionate about. And um, I've been really excited to, uh, to run this race because of the connections that I have in this community. Um, I believe I'm the best candidate to run in this state Senate seat for a few reasons. Uh, and, and all of them tend to come back to the connections that I believe I have with the people in this community that mean a lot to me. Um, I am the only candidate, Democrat or Republican, that lives in this district. I also lived in this district during law school. Um, but I've actually dedicated myself to this community ever since many of you saw me run for office the first time back in 2016 when I ran for the State House of Representatives. So 
course, we won that primary. We lost to Holly Rashian, who's a, who's a tough opponent in the Keys. We all know that. Um, but I didn't give up. And I know that this community especially has seen a lot of candidates for the state legislature and a lot of other races that come down from Miami, run for office, run or win and disappear and are never heard from again. And I wanted to make sure that uh, when I ran back in 2016 that the promises that I made to dedicate myself to this community and to be there and to show up, um, that I was able to follow through on that, even if I didn't win that first race. And so um, I really made it a priority to learn more about this community, get more engaged in this district. And I've done that. And I've worked in the state Senate. I worked in the state Senate as a legislative aide for state Senator Annette Sedato. I got some really amazing experience in the 2018 legislative session, um, working on a lot of uh, business related uh, legislation, especially in the, the banking and insurance committee, uh, which is the, the bulk of what I worked on. Um, and then I, I left that job to become the state director for a nonprofit fighting for voting rights uh, with the League of Women Voters. We did a lot of really great work uh, getting an early voting site at FIU and other college campuses throughout the country. And the, I'm sorry, throughout the state. And then I became the uh, district chief of staff to our Congresswoman Debbie Mukersell Powell. Uh, that was the best opportunity, I think, in my career to really rekindle those relationships that I, I created in 2016 when I ran. And I'm very thankful to have a lot of support from local elected officials from Key West all the way up through Key Largo, from city council to Mosquito Board, um, in, including some of the, the past candidates that have run in the Keys. The Keys are always going to be really important to me. Um, you know, the, I, I always think of this community as being the community that really gave me my first chance to put myself out there and run for office. Um, and so, you know, the issues that I think are, are most important going into this next legislative session, the first off, I think we have to fix the unemployment system. I understand the challenges that a lot of people have had working in the state Senate and working in Congress. We used to hear from, from constituents a lot and we would, you know, constituent services were always one of my focuses. And I understand that the, the squeeze that the economy has on, on, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs. And I also understand how that's connected to housing. Um, housing is a huge issue. I mean, I know someone that lives in the Keys that was working full time and in order to save some more money, they actually had to give up their lease and go live in a tent in the park for a month just to save up enough money to invest in having a place to, to stay that they, were, that they were comfortable with. Three minutes have passed. Okay, thank you. Uh, and so I just really want to, uh, to reemphasize that I'm always going to be committed to the people of this community. Um, you know, they're always going to be able to reach out and contact me. Uh, one of the things that I think is most important for this next legislative session, as I begin to, as I began to uh, mention a moment ago, I think is the unemployment system. Um, I, I think that the people of this community and really throughout the state really answered the call to shelter in place when the pandemic started getting out of hand. And yet that unemployment assistance center wasn't, uh, assistance system wasn't there to help the people that needed it. Um, and it should have been. And I think that that's impacted a lot of small business owners because you know, obviously, if there's no local money circulating in the community, then that hits small businesses first. Uh, and so that's going to be my immediate priority in 2021, getting up in the legislative session and fixing that system. And then, of course, climate change and clean water issues are always going to be my top priority. They always have been. Um, we need to restore the flow of Lake Okeechobee through the Everglades and into Florida Bay. Our entire economy, hospitality, tourism, all depend on the health of Florida Bay. So you can always count on me. Probably. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. And now we move to the Republican candidates for representative in Congress, District 26. I'll quickly repeat the rules. Please virtually raise your hand when your name is called. Remember, you have three to five minutes to speak. You will get a time warning at three minutes and at four and a half minutes, and time will be called at five minutes. And now I would like to call Omar Blanco. I'm sorry, Susie, is he here? Omar Blanco? I did not see him. If you are here, could you come off mute and say hello so we can find you? I don't believe he is here. No, I didn't see him. One more call for Omar Blanco. Okay, moving to Carlos Jimenez. Here you go. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Carlos Jimenez. I am currently serving as the mayor of Miami-Dade County. I'm running for, on the Republican side, for uh, Florida Congressional District 26. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, came here when I was six years old uh, from Cuba, uh, fleeing communism and socialism. 
with uh, my father, my mother, my grandmother, and my sister. I've been uh, educated in uh, in Miami um, and all the way through uh, through college. I, uh, a couple of things happened in 1975. It was very significant in my life. Uh, number one, I married my high school sweetheart, uh, Lourdes, Lourdes Portella. Uh, we have three uh, beautiful children, but more importantly, we have six wonderful uh, grandchildren. Uh, at the same time in that year, I also joined the, the City of Miami Fire Department uh, as a firefighter. And I uh, quickly rose through the ranks. I was a firefighter, a paramedic. Also uh, served on the uh, City of Miami Police Department SWAT team. So I also served on the Police Department too. Uh, I quickly rose through the ranks, became the youngest fire chief in the City of Miami's history and the first Hispanic fire chief in 1991 at the age of 37. I was credited with having the largest reorganization of that department in that department's history, making it more efficient uh, and also more uh, responsive to the citizens' needs and their calls for help. Uh, in the year 2000, when people were throwing bananas at City Hall, the uh, mayor of the city of Miami picked me to be the city manager. And so I switched and became the city manager of the city of Miami at a time when the city of Miami was under financial oversight. Uh, during my three years as city manager, before I retired in, uh, after 28 years in the city, uh, we had, um, we had the, the financial oversight board was dissolved. Uh, and also when I left the city of Miami, we had reduced taxes to the lowest levels in 50 years and also left the city with the highest levels of reserves in its history, close to $150 million. I then went um, and, and ran for county commission and I was elected the county commissioner for District 7 uh, for the Miami-Dade County Commission in 2004. In, uh, in 2011, uh, after a recall of the previous mayor, I ran for mayor and I was elected and I've been reelected twice. So I've, I've actually had been elected three times to the mayor of Miami-Dade County and I'm termed out now. Um, and uh, my, my accomplishments as, uh, as the Miami-Dade mayor have been that we uh, established the largest tax cut in uh, Miami-Dade County's history. We closed a $400 million gap in its budget the first year that I was there. The Miami-Dade County government is a $9 billion government. I am the strong mayor, and that means I'm the chief executive officer of Miami-Dade County. County. I, I make all the decisions about hiring and firing. We have 28,000 employees, the largest police and fire departments in the Southeast United States fourth largest uh, water and sewer system in, in the United States. When I became uh, the mayor, our unemployment rate was over 12 and percent. Now recently, up until the COVID uh, crisis hit, the unemployment rate was down to 1.8%, the lowest unemployment rate in Miami-Dade County. Three system. minutes have passed. We've had uh, a great success in attracting new businesses uh, to, to Miami-Dade County. We've uh, actually lowered the taxes again, lowest tax rate, lowest tax, biggest tax cut in Miami-Dade County history, saved the taxpayer about $1.9 billion, but also have a strong environmental record. We're the uh, first county in the United States to, uh, to establish a chief resiliency officer. We're the only county in the world to be part of the Rockefeller 100 Resilient Cities. I've been giving awards, I've been given awards for holding the line, the urban development boundary here in Miami-Dade to protect the Everglades and our environment. And we're also embarking on the largest public works project in Miami-Dade County history, over $10 billion to uh, help and augment and restore and protect our water supply in Miami-Dade Miami -Dade County. As a, if I am uh, honored and, and uh, elected to, to go to Congress, then uh, my focus will be on reestablishing our economy after the devastation of uh, COVID-19, uh, but also making sure that we're safe. Um, I am uh, not, we just this uh, last budget, we, uh, I, I proposed and the commission has accepted we're gonna be increasing the funding for police. I don't, don't believe in the defund police uh, uh, mantra. I am uh, I'm pro police, I'm pro security, both at home and, uh, and abroad, but I'm also about establishing and reestablishing our economy because only with a strong economy can then we can protect our environment. And so 30 seconds remaining. Carlos Jimenez, Mayor of Miami-Dade County, but also now running for Congress in uh, Florida, Congressional District number 26. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Republican candidate for state attorney, 16th Judicial Circuit. Once again, please virtually raise your hand when your name is called. You will have three to five minutes to speak. You will get a time warning at three minutes, four and a half minutes, and time will be called at five minutes. Mark Cole. Hello. 
My name is Mark Cole and I'm running for state attorney. I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I graduated from the Citadel in 1977 and shortly after that I went to work at the state attorney's office in West Palm Beach. I worked there for approximately nine years and while I worked there I went to law school and uh, came back to the state attorney's office up there as an assistant state attorney. I prosecuted uh, a number of cases up there, uh, worked my way up. I spent you know, a couple years in the misdemeanor division, a couple years in the juvenile division, a couple years in the uh, felony division. And I worked myself up to the point where I was doing some fairly serious felonies. In 1987, I moved down to the Keys and began prosecuting cases out of Key West. I worked down there for about a year and a half and in 1989, they promoted me and moved me to the supervisor of the Upper Keys uh, Office of the State Attorney. And I worked there until 1995 when I went into private practice for about uh, four or five years. And in 2000, I was elected to the position that I'm currently seeking, that of State Attorney for Monroe County. Um, I served as your State Attorney for eight years. And in 2008, I was defeated by the person I'm running against in my, in this uh, Republican uh, primary. I would point out to you that uh, when he defeated me in 2008, he was running as a Democrat. He switched parties after he lost the uh, Democratic primary in 2012 and changed over to the Republican Party. And I'm kind of glad that he did change over to the Republican Party. I, you know, I've been a lifelong Republican myself, and I like to see people convert over to a, our way of uh, thinking. But I believe that he did it because of the, the political advantage that he got out of it. And he was elected in 2016. Um, he rode Trump's coattails in. And I'm now seeking to unseat him in the Republican primary that's going to be uh, uh, finished up on Tuesday of next week. Something else about me is that I've been very involved in my community. Um, I'm a graduate of Leadership Monroe, class 12, and I served on the board of directors of Leadership Monroe for, I believe it was around seven years. Um, I'm very active in Rotary. I was the past president of the Upper Keys Rotary Club, and last year, um, it just ended a couple weeks ago, I was the district secretary for the Southeast uh, District 6990 of Rotary. Um, <clears throat> I'm an active member of the Alamrata Chamber of Commerce, and in the past, I've been a member of actually um, the Key West Chamber of Commerce, the Lower Keys Chamber of Commerce, the Marathon Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Key Largo Chamber of Commerce, in addition to the Alamrata Chamber of Commerce. Basically, the situation, in my opinion, is that we need a change in our state attorney's office. I'm unhappy with the things that are going on there, and if any of you have been uh, paying attention to the news, you might agree with me. Um, <clears throat> and my belief is, is that, you know, you lead from the top. And I believe that the leadership uh, example that has been given by my opponent is a bad one. And, you know, it's no surprise to me with the, some of the actions that he's performed in the past, things like um, ex parte communications with judges, ex parte communications with jurors, you know, ignoring the uh, Florida Bar's requirement that you get, um, you know, CLE hours in during the, you know, d within a specified period of time. Oops. So all of these things are, are problems that I believe that are, you know, show that there's a lack of leadership at the state attorney's office. Additionally, um, you know, we've had some other problems where, one of his assistant state attorneys was suspended for a period uh, of one year because of unethical conduct. Sorry about that, my computer keeps beeping at me. Um, we've had uh, a lack of supervision. Every week I hear something new that, that bothers me about what's going on in his office. A couple weeks ago, I found out that he put his girlfriend on the payroll at the state attorney's office. You know, while there's nothing illegal or wrong about that, it just, it just doesn't seem right. This morning, as I was watching the news, I saw something else that bothered me. If, if any of you saw the, uh, the news article, and I understand it was on the front page of The Citizen today, there was a uh, young 
uh, young boy down in Key West that was. Uh, Your time is up. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, your time is up. Thank you. You will get time for closing comments at the end. Dennis W. Ward. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, BPW, for putting this uh, uh, this this political forum uh, together. You guys, uh, so far, have done a great job, and I really appreciate that, Susie. Uh, you and the whole crew. As you know, I, I I'm a member of the Upper Keys uh, Business and Professional Women's Organization. I attend your luncheons. I and, and I, by the way, I miss the luncheons because. They're always great having that wonderful food from the Holiday Inn it's, <laughs> and interacting with all you are. Uh, my name is Dennis Ward. I'm your current state attorney. Uh, I have been the state attorney when I was elected in 20 sec 2016. I took office in 2017. Uh, prior to that, uh, I was the state attorney from 2008. I got elected in 2008, took office in 2009 through 2013. Um, I have uh, 48 years of experience in the criminal justice system as a police officer, as a, an assistant state attorney, prosecutor, an assistant public defender. Uh, I had a successful law practice. Uh, I was the state attorney, like I say, uh, from 2009 to 2013, and uh, uh, I've, I've accomplished a lot. Uh, I prosecuted uh, public corruption uh, my first term. Uh, there was over a uh, million dollars uh, stolen from the school district, from our students, our, our children. Uh, iPads and iPhones being sold out of the back of County Hall. A, the agent in charge of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, uh, Vince Weiner, uh, uh, we prosecuted him for homestead fraud. Uh, the woman who ran the Bahama Village uh, rehabilitation or rehab or redevelopment uh, project uh, and, and, and many more. Um, I was uh, uh, voted out of office in a, in a Democratic primary where the primary was closed by uh, Mr. Cole and uh, Ms. Vogel and they've done the same thing here again this time, disenfranchising two thirds of the county from being able to vote for uh, their choice of state attorney. But uh, I, I wanna tell you that um, the crime rate in 2018 and 2019 Combined, uh, crime went down over 30%. And I'm very proud of that and our ability to work with the law enforcement agencies in our community. Uh, we've never lost a major criminal case and uh, we continue to uh, prosecute uh, people that come down into our community and try and uh, commit crimes against our citizens. Uh, one of the biggest uh, programs I have right now is trying to preserve our natural resources, which is why I ended up with one opponent uh, as a Democrat. Uh, there's a group of um, defense attorneys that don't like uh, my jail policies for people that come down and rape and pillage our lobster, our fish, jump on our pelicans, hogtie our key deer. I ask for jail time in those things. So we, we do that uh, a lot. Uh, Crimes against women, I'm, I'm very tough on. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you may recall up here in the Upper Keys, uh, one of my first cases that we prosecuted was a, uh, a violent, brutal rape of a young woman behind the Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, we prosecuted that individual and we, we got a, a life sentence on him. Uh, another issue that is very concerning and should be concerning to the business of uh, professional uh, women is uh, the recent a motion by uh, a criminal defense attorney to require a survivor of domestic violence to provide her prior relationships for the past 10 years to a defense attorney so he could call those individuals and uh, see if this uh, woman had prior incidents like that. You know, I, I was a police officer uh, back in, in, in the last century and we fought so hard to get rights for women, for women to be able to not be harassed by defense attorneys, whether it's in depositions or on the witness stand, to not shame women into dropping their, their, their charges, to not shame women into uh, being uh, their, their past 
conduct brought up uh, and it, 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 it all that work we put into that remaining and and all that work we put into that and here we are in in 2020 with a defense attorney and a female judge agreeing with him and, and ordering us to provide that information well i said no we're not going to do that we're not doing that at all we appealed that thankfully judge koenig researched the law i i got the the league of women voters uh, the national organization of women involved uh, we went to the court and judge koenig uh, slapped down that that very troubling verdict or um, so Dennis, I'm sorry your time is up okay thank, well, you. thank you so much thank you thank you all right up next we have Republican candidates for state representative 120 once again please virtually raise your hand when your name is called you will have three to five minutes to speak and you will hear the time warnings at three and four and a half minutes I hope everyone is hearing the warnings Okay, Jill, I think you were a little muted on, on one of them. Which be a, a little yeah, I apologize for that. Is the sound check is okay there or? You sound good to me now, yes. Okay, thank you. Perfect, thank you. So first up we have James Jim Vernon Mooney Jr. Has Jim been able to join us? I don't believe he is here. I did not see him. I don't believe he is. I'm searching, no. Okay, then we will move on. Rhonda Redman Lopez. Okay, is everything? I'm here, ready? Okay, ready. Okay. Hi, I'm Rhonda Redman Lopez. Thank you, BPW, for hosting this. I think it's a wonderful way to get more information on the candidates, and I particularly enjoy hearing from each one of you. I am Rhonda Redman Lopez, candidate for Florida House District 120. I'm married to George Lopez, uh, my husband, for over 25 years. We have two sons, Ben and Noah, recent graduates of Johns Hopkins University and Texas Christian University, and they're now working in the private sector. I have two rescue dogs, Spot and Lola. I worked for American Airlines at the time, was the largest airline in the world. I worked there for 21 years, and I also worked at Miami Dade College as a testing specialist for 10 years. I now work for our 63 year old third generation family business, Pico International Electric, as the president of Pico. My campaign, I'm proud to say and happy to say, is working like a well wooled machine. I believe my team and I have run a campaign like no other that the Keys has seen before. And my voters are very, very enthusiastic about sending a small businesswoman to Tallahassee to represent Florida House District 120. Now, I've covered a lot of ground between TV, radio, phone calls, mail, and just good old fashioned door to door voter contact. My campaign and I have knocked on literally thousands of doors between Homestead and Key West. And after receiving the endorsements from many associations and groups such as the teachers, the firefighters, the mayor of Homestead, police, votewater.org, Fishermen for Clean Water and Everglades Trust, my campaign has attracted a wide array of support from voters all over the district. And it's something everyone can get behind and find something in common with in my campaign. I'm clearly the most pro-environment, pro-law enforcement, pro-first responder, pro-education, pro-clean water candidate on the ballot. And this is evident by the many endorsements from those groups. And I'm a strong advocate for the comprehensive Everglades restoration plan to bring more clean water south to Florida Bay to restore our underwater ecosystem. The Everglades Trust recognized my advocacy and they immediately endorsed me as their candidate for clean water. My plan is to enhance water quality and protect our wildlife for our economy, for tourism, and for our fishermen and our residents. I also wanted to mention that I wanted to bring up education. I'm the daughter of a lifelong educator. My mother was a public school teacher in Alabama for close to 48 years. And I worked in the education at Miami Dade College for close to 10 years, and they endorsed me in this race. Their faculty and teachers endorsed me in this race. I wanted to mention that as far as COVID and sending the children back to school, I stand firm that I think that decision should be made 
by the parents who know their children best and they need to coordinate and speak with people with the Board of Education and involved in the education system. And it should be very strong conversations about this, but I do stand by the fact that that is a parent's decision as far as sending those kids back to school or keeping them at home. I do realize that the ideal situation would be for them to have a conventional learning environment and going back to school. But we all know that right now that uh, people are, are worried about COVID and there's just a lot of things to take in consideration. It's no secret I'm the only candidate in this race that can rightfully be claimed or that can rightfully claim to be the only small business owner. And I am President of Pico International Electric and I've hired hundreds of South Floridians I want to champion business. I want revenue to flow constantly and keep this economy strong. I want to cut regulations as much as possible on businesses and encourage entrepreneurship. Also housing, traffic and infrastructure, they're major challenges that must be addressed. We cannot continue the status quo over the next two years. Overdevelopment and over commercial building seems to play a big part in this problem district wide that must be analyzed and addressed. I also want to analyze the budget in Tallahassee, make deals, successful spending, and fight for South Florida's fair share. I'll always be a voice to protect and make District 120 the most recognized district in Tallahassee. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Alexandria Suarez. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, very good, thank you. I'm Alexandria Suarez. I'm running to be our next state representative in District 120. And uh, you know, it, it's interesting. It's been over 420 days since I started campaigning in our district. And a lot of candidates make a lot of promises and they like to talk the talk. Well, I'm the type of candidate that I walk the walk. Uh, I've been in education. Uh, I was 10 years, and not only as a school teacher, but I also worked with the school board, um, and I ran a school-wide Socratic learning method that made us A-plus rated by the Department of Education in Florida without being any special program. Um, I left that only because I had four children to feed and I couldn't afford to stay in teaching, and so I went into healthcare. That brought me across the whole district from Miami to Key West. Three weeks, every three weeks for eight years, I was from the mainland down to Key West, everything in between and back up. And uh, in my 40s, I had the opportunity to do something better, do more, and I became a lawyer. I was in private practice for four years in healthcare and family law and some civil litigation, nothing to do with personal injury, contrary to what some people have tried to uh, allege. And I became an assistant state attorney earlier this year with the Keys, with Monroe County. Um, I'm happy to say that I am officially a Keys resident uh, so we are based in Key Largo now, and I, like I said, I walk the walk. Um, there's issues that everyone can say all day long that they want to do this and they want to do that. But we need to look at who is really the go-getter, who's out there, who is knocking on doors, who has a track record. You know, if, if I start to go over all the accomplishments or all the people in my family, I, I come from a Cuban family, we'll be here till tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm the youngest of six. I put myself through college, not once, but twice, raising children. Um, I'm, I'm sharing for a year now, I have been sharing my merits, what I have to offer to the table. Uh, I'm a woman that stands on my own two feet. I'm a conservative woman. I believe in our constitutional republic. I believe that the avocado trees and the coral reef do not care what side of the fence we lie on. We need people that are jumping in for the right reasons, which is public service which is making our district a better place so that when we step down like Holly did, we leave it better than when we started. And that takes a lot of work, but that also takes personal accomplishments. I don't believe that for right now, we are in the position that we can afford any more career or corrupt politicians. We just can't. Our district is too important from farm to sea. We have in the North End, the only place that you can farm year round in the North American continent. And we have a globally unique ecosystem in the, in the Florida Keys. Our district is indispensable when it comes to in, uh, the Everglades restoration and the environment. I understand that because it's been in my backyard for many, many years. And I have ties across the entire district that no other candidate can say, whether Republican or Democrat. Uh, so I hope people have had a chance to get to know me. Um, I will say this, 
what sets me apart from the other candidates? Well, my work experience, my real world work experience sets me apart from all the other candidates. The fact that I have ties across the whole district sets me apart from all the other candidates. And my values set me apart from all the other candidates. What do we need to do? We need to deregulate before anything else. We need to cut back those burdensome regulations that are hindering our businesses. We need recovery. After COVID, people are struggling. The businesses are struggling. At home, we're struggling. People don't know whether they're going to have food on the table or a paycheck in the next two weeks. And so we really have to address these issues that are real in our district. Um, there's so many things that we have to offer. Our tourism, we need to bring back the tourism. We need to find a way to get us back on track that is the least restrictive means of doing so. Um, and that includes school. Overall, we just need to improve our way of life here, our quality of life, but we need to reduce our cost of living. And everything falls under that, whether it's insurance rates, whether it's our taxes. You know, that's something that sets me apart from another candidate that's, that's in the keys. He has a track record of raising taxes. Well, I believe that we, I do not believe that we should raise taxes and keep pet projects. We, have we need to make sure that we are taking care of our district and we are taking care of residents when we live in an area that is the worst cost of living in Florida. So I plan on going in since day one and I plan on deregulating where we can, balancing the budget without raising taxes. I've signed a pledge for that and making sure that we bring everyone back up out of recovery without the expenses that we've been under for so long. Um, this is a beautiful place. I mean, we get tourists from all over the world and we need a representative that is going to go up to Tallahassee and work for all of all time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up we have Republican candidates for County Commissioner District 5. Again, you will have, please raise your hand virtually. You will have three to five minutes. You will get a warning at three minutes, four and a half, and time will be called at five. And we ask you to please stop speaking at that time. Michael P. Forster. I don't believe that Mike has been able to join us yet tonight. Mike, are you here? I do not believe that he is. So we will move on to Robbie Majeska. Yep. Robbie is muted. Robbie, you are muted still. Hold on, I'm working on it. Sorry, Robbie. Hold on. Let me find you. <laughs> That's crazy. I how come I can't? Hold on, let me do this. Sorry about okay. that. Hold on. Yes, I do apologize. We Here we now? go. Yes, we you're good? good to go. Yes. Um, Here you are. <laughs> it's probably my problem. But first of all, I want to say that every time I've run for election, be it for the wastewater board or four years ago when I ran for county commissioner district five, this has always been my favorite forum. You guys have done a tremendous job. You know, it, it was the venue, the questions asked were professional. Uh, everything was great, you know, and I, I kind of miss that, you know, but so this year we have to do it a little different, you know, and it was, it really was great. I really miss that. But, you know, times are changing. And I believe that our current health and economic problems can give us an opportunity to reset, you know, they can, to, to slow down the overdevelopment of the keys. You know, this is an opportunity to, to bring back the keys and stop the negative effect of too much building and too many tours have had on our environment and our quality of life. Our, as residents, we're trapped in our homes on the weekends. We can't even go out. It, it could take, oh, I can't go to Almorada today because it's an hour to get down there. Our environment has been overpowered by the large numbers of visitors and developments. But we can find a way to get through this without overspending and overtaxing. All right. I mentioned before that I ran for Sylvia four years ago. Oh, and just not, oh, I, no. I ran for her because even though I believed in many of the ways she voted, I don't think she fought hard enough for Key Largo. This is District 5, Key Largo, Tavernier, and Ocean Reef. As an elected commissioner on the Key Largo Wastewater Treatment District, I went to Washington, I went to Tallahassee, and I fought for the citizens here. But I also saw how we weren't getting 
the attention that we needed up here in the Upper Keys. Look at Rouse Marina. We bought that five or six years ago, and it's still an empty piece of property. I've been to many of the meetings that they had at the parks and heard all the talk, but usually what gets decided is let's have another meeting. All right. Last year, $1 million was finally put into the budget so that something can be done for Rouse Marina this year. But we had the COVID overtime scandal. And guess what? That million dollars went to pay the county employees for their overtime. And there's no more money to develop Rouse Marina. And there was not a peep. Nobody complained about it. Nobody said, well, why don't we take it from this pot? Or why don't we cut the budget in the building department? No. Nope. Let's just take the million away from Rouse Marina, and that was it. You know, I, I mentioned Sylvia not too long ago because I, I ran against her before, and I'm gonna run, I was going to run against her again. And about a year ago, I got a call from my opponent, and he said, Rob, I'm going to run for Sylvia's seat. And I said, why are you going to do that? Why don't you run for District 4, your district? I'll run for District 5, and the two of us can work together because we have worked together before, and we can work together again. He said, nope, I'm going to run for District 5, Key Largo. Now what am I going to do? So I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Sylvia came to me several times, and she said, why don't you run? We need somebody from Key Largo to be in this district. She actually gave me my first campaign donation. So I, I decided, all right, we, we have to run for that. She wanted to make sure that this seat went to somebody that lived, worked, and cared for Key Largo. I've shown the citizens of Key Largo that I care for our community. I've been Boy Scout leader. I've worked with the schools. I've worked really hard to lower our cost of living on the wastewater district. I've attended many, many, many of the meetings at the county commission. Even the one they had last month was a Zoom meeting that went from 9 o'clock in the morning to after 7 o'clock at night. If you want to go and sit and show that you want to be a county commissioner, sit in a county commission meeting from 9 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night on Zoom. It's not easy, you know? I have a great basic knowledge of all the issues in the Keys because I've been going to these meetings for years. I know about canal restoration. I know about the, we have lack of recycling going on down here. I know about the ROGO units. I know, I have great knowledge of all the, all the different issues that affect the Keys, but there's still details I don't know. And I know I'm not gonna know everything. It's gonna take me a while, learning process, but I always will keep in mind, how is this gonna affect the Key Largo resident. How is this going to affect the Tavernier resident? And how is this going to affect all the residents in Monroe County? We need to take the county back where we think about our residents first, in not the tourism Park. dollars. So I'm going to stop now and say, Robbie Majeska, there we are. Vote, there we are. Vote for me, please. I need your vote. We need to make, you know, Key Largo needs to elect this official, not Key West. And unfortunately, Half the votes are in Key West. So I need everybody up in the Upper Keys to come out and vote for me right now. There's no lines. You can go in right away. Vote for Robbie Majeska, County Commission. Thank you very much. Thank you. And real quick, I did want to let people know Robbie did mention the forum that we do where we have questions. We do still plan to do that in October. So we do the mixer in August and then stay tuned for more of the political forum in October. Next up is Republican candidate for state committee man. So once again, please raise your hand virtually when you are called. You will have three to five minutes. You get a time warning at three minutes and four and a half minutes. Up first is Stephen Hammond. Hello. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Good. Hello, as was said, uh, I am Stephen Hammond, your Republican state committee man. And I'm, I am here asking uh, you to reelect re me again. In 2016, as your state committee man, Republicans across the board, both locally and nationally, uh, were, uh, were both reelected and we had a great turnout. At that time, it seemed impossible, especially when you listen to most media outlets as we did, uh, if you were a Republican, you remember the excitement that we all felt that night in November 2016. I was actually a very early supporter of Donald Trump. In October 2015, at an RPOF meeting, a Republican Party of Florida meeting, I was in Orlando when I first heard uh, Donald Trump speak. It was both exciting and electrifying at the same time. I was hooked, and I have been, 
a lifelong Republican and a proud conservative ever since. I believe our 2020 elections will be a defining moment in America. There are two major paths we could take here in Florida and our country. I believe, I, I believe in our Republican agenda. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of our Second Amendment rights. I love our military. I love our police. Uh, I am financially a financially conservative person. I have been your Republican State Committee man now for five years. It has indeed been my honor to represent all Republicans of Monroe County. With the assistance of our committee woman and our chairman and myself, we have had a positive impact in Tallahassee and across this great state. This position requires that you work with other Republicans across the, the state. You must, must get along with your peers. Currently, your team is getting the job done with proven results. We have had the best fundraising ever. We now have more Republican voters in the county than ever before. I have been involved in all areas of the Republican Party for not only our county, but also in Tallahassee and throughout our state. I was recently chosen to be one of your delegates, the Republican delegates to the Republican National Convention. I'm not sure if Carla Bond is still on, but she was on this call. She was also chosen as an alternate delegate. My name again is Stephen Hammond. Please note, please know as your state committee man, I'm here for you. If you ever need me, I will respond quickly to your texts, emails, phone calls, and your messages. To all Republicans, I thank you for all you do for the party. Uh, help me keep the Grand Ole Party going strong. Please vote for Stephen Hammond for state committee man on August 18th. Uh, I really appreciate, oh yes, please email me at reelectstephenhammond at gmail.com with any questions. Three thank minutes. You Were you finished, Steve? I'm finished. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very much. Casey Cass Shu. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Susie and Christina, for putting this on tonight. Um, first off, let me introduce myself. My name is Casey Cashew, and I'm running for the office of Republican State Committee Man. I moved to Key Largo with my parents in 1984. I graduated Coral Shores in 1990 and married my high school love in 1993. And just before Hurricane Andrew in 1992, my father and I created a small electronics company. Fast forward to 2020, we have four children, two in college, and one graduating Coral Shores in 2020. I've lived my entire life in the Keys, but I've also traveled to six continents over 30 years as a defense contractor. I've worked on the Curiosity rover that's on Mars and several projects for the International Space Station. I'm currently semi-retired and own a small business that specializes in equipment, processes, and supplies used in servicing manufacturers of advanced circuit boards, designs, and repairs. Current customers include NASA, Intel, DRT, Department of Defense, and Qualcomm. So what's the state committee man, you ask? The state committee man is the elected Republican representative from Monroe County to the RPOF. The state committee man and committee woman represent all registered Republicans in the Florida Keys. The job is twofold. 350 days a year, the committeeman lobbies Republican policies in Monroe County, organizes events, provides oversight to elected officials. In short, they are the watchdog for Republican principles in the Florida Keys. The second half of the job is to meet with the RPOF four times a year and relay the information about Monroe County to the general body of the RPOF, meet in committees and talk about state policy. The state committeeman's race is a partisan race and only Republicans are able to vote in this race. That being said, I wanted to use my time to talk about Republican policies I will promote and how they will assist women-owned businesses in the Florida Keys. Charter school funding and school choice are two issues that directly affect working moms. The Dems are trying to defund charter schools and eliminate the voucher program, providing students the ability to move to different schools. If an entrepreneurial mom wants to start a business and needs to travel, their children's well-being should not be a factor in that decision. If they want to educate their children closer, by all means, they should have that choice. Another major obstacle small business women have to overcome is local planning and code department. Code is intentionally written to be intrusive, difficult, and very costly. Permitting fees alone will stop a small business from ever getting off the ground, let alone flourish. The codes can be rewritten 
and made friendlier, but there has to be a person who's going to lobby the BOCC commissioners. Restructuring our codes and rules is a good place to start. I'm the chairman of the Trump campaign in Monroe County, and I've been pushing Republican causes for 15 years. But instead of listing a bunch of Republican positions within the party, I wanted to close with a comment about Marlene Weeks and the green space issue. Marlene spearheaded the effort. It took Marlene months of calls, meetings, Facebook posts, and attending BOCC meetings to organize a successful effort. The BOCC didn't want to listen to Marlene. In fact, they restructured the form and placed public- Three minutes have passed, three minutes. The point I'm getting to is, we all knew affordable housing being built in a very small park was blatantly obviously wrong. If not for Marlene, there would be housing in the park. Marlene needed a person to reach out to that could provide assistance. The state committee represents 22,000 registered Republican voters in the Florida Keys. Any one of the county commissioners could have helped, but they didn't. I will be that person you can reach out to when in need. Green space is only one example of how the county needs proper oversight. Other examples are Rouse Marina, Hickory House, Marathon Manor is a very long list. Vote for me, Casey Shu, for state committeeman on August 18th and bring back accountable government. Thank you very much. I yield my time. Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right, well, we have now heard from all of the candidates in attendance at this time, and we are doing good on time tonight. So we will go back around and give all candidates the opportunity to do a closing statement tonight. So we ask that you keep it to about a minute, no more than 90 seconds when time will be called. So we will go back in the same order that we started in, starting with our Democratic candidate for state senator, Javier E. Fernandez. Well, again, thanks to everyone for your participation this evening, uh, for joining us on this very important call. It's been my honor to participate. Um, I think I'm a candidate who brings a lifetime of experience, of connection to the di di uh, district, and a record of service that starts working with local elected officials to fashion an agenda for change in Tana Tallahassee that benefits our community. I look forward to continuing that work uh, as your future state senator, and would ask you for your support on August 18th. And I look forward to working with, with this group in particular to expand access to for young women across uh, the, the Monroe County in particular. Uh, we as uh, electeds in Tallahassee have the opportunity to mentor, uh, bring young women into the process. Uh, I'd like to work with this group to make sure that we take advantage of those opportunities for internships as well as service as pages during the legislative process. Uh, an experience that often very few get to realize, but one that can change and transform someone's life and perspective and possibly encourage them to serve themselves. So I look forward to that partnership and look forward to earning your support here in August and hopefully again in November. Thank you so much. Thank you. Daniel Dan Horton Diaz. There we go. All right, thanks again, everyone. I, uh, you know, I enjoy being here. Hopefully uh, the next time we get to do this, we get to do it in person. But again, you all know me as Dan, running for the state Senate, uh, the Democratic candidate to represent our community up in Tallahassee in the state government. Um, I think, the, you know, the community connections that I have are really important. That's what I hang my hat on. And the one thing that, uh, that I believe that you all know about me and that you can count on is that I'm going to do the work. I'm always going to be able to do the work in this community, and I'm always going to be responsive to this community. When you have an issue, you can reach out. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here, and you can always count on me. And, uh, you know, I hope you all go vote. Of course, Election Day is the 18th. Uh, the 15th is the last day of early voting, so I hope I can count on you. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Now we go back to the Republican candidate for representative in Congress District 26. Has Omar Blanco been able to join us yet? I don't believe so. No, I looked around, nope. Thank you, Ilya. So we will move on to Carlos Jimenez. Thank you very much for, for having this forum. It, uh, it's been great. My name is Carlos Jimenez, and again, I'm uh, running for Congress in uh, Florida District 26. I have a solid record of public service for over 45 years, uh, and uh, I didn't start up in the top. I started out in the streets of the city of Miami, so I learned my craft, you know, from the bottom up, and I will represent you uh, honorably, and uh, I have, as in every other position I've ever held, as a fire chief, as a city manager, as a county commissioner, as, as now as a county mayor, 
Uh, I've always left uh, whatever organization that I ran or been in charge of better than when I got it. And I will represent you better than uh, what you have uh, today. I will represent you with honor and I'll represent our interests. We will rebuild our economy, we'll restore the trust of America and also make sure that uh, you're safe in your home, uh, both here and, uh, and abroad. And so if you honor me with your vote, I certainly would appreciate it. Uh, I'm number uh, 18 on the ballot. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you. Now, Republican candidates for state attorney 16th Judicial Circuit. Once again, you will have 60 to 90 minutes. Please limit it to no more than 90 minutes at which time time will be called. Mark E. Cole. I think you meant 90 seconds, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> that's 90 seconds. I'm Cole. sorry, I wish I could give you 90 minutes, but yes, sorry, 90 seconds. <laughs> my name is Mark Cole, and uh, I want to say thank you very much to the BPW for uh, holding this forum. And remind everybody to get out and vote next Tuesday, if you haven't already. I've looked over uh, the list of people that are participating in this, uh, in this Zoom meeting, and I know a large number of you, and I think a large number of you also know my reputation. Um, I am the most experienced attorney in this race, and I'm the ethical choice on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis W. Ward. Okay, thank you, um, BPW. And I just want to thank my staff for helping me put together a uh, state attorney's office that is responsive to the public. Uh, I want to thank my chief assistant, who is the only board certified criminal attorney in Monroe County. I want to thank my uh, executive director, Mary Bayless, who was nominated and uh, confirmed as one of the top 10 uh, female lawyers in labor and employment law in the United States of America. And they've done so much for me and so much for our office. And I think that's why our office is efficient. I want to just make a point that for the first time in the history of the state attorney's office, there's eight female prosecutors and seven male prosecutors. That's never happened before. So um, we, we've done a great job with that and, and our diversity uh, is, is really wonderful. And what great jobs my prosecutors are doing. So thank you very much for this forum and you guys have a great night. Thank you. And now we will hear again from the Republican candidates for State Representative 120. First on the ballot is James Jim Vernon Mooney Jr. I don't think there's time. I don't know if Jim Mooney has been able to join us yet tonight. No. I did not see sure. him come in, no ma'am. Okay, so we will move to Rhonda Redman Lopez. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm Rhonda once again, and I would like to say that I am the only candidate in the race for Florida House District 120 that, including the Democrat, that was put on the ballot for this race by the voters, by voter petitions. All the other ones, which there's three of them, paid approximately $2,000 to get on the ballot. And some of those even paid with their uh, contributions from from their voters and I just think that is so fiscally irresponsible and it's just downright lazy because they could even been in the race longer than I was and there was no reason that they should not get those petitions other than being unorganized and lazy I'll just be honest with you I also want to say that um, as a Republican uh, both of my opponents in the primary claim to be big President Trump and Governor DeSantis supporters. Well, let me tell you this. I co-chaired uh, President Trump, Women for President Trump, South Florida. I co-chaired Women for Governor DeSantis. I never saw either one of these people, and I was all over South Florida, volunteering to get our president elected or our governor elected. They weren't in the trenches with the real solid Trump people and the real solid DeSantis people. I feel like that that's just an opportunist way of saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Trump, I'm DeSantis, just to garner votes. And, and you know what? Even one lady in my race has been registered to vote that's since 1988 and has second. never voted Republican once in a primary. Rhonda, your, your time is up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, Alexandria Suarez. Thank you. If anybody wants to reach me, 
uh, they can email me at alexandria at alexandriasuarez.org or they can call me at 305-505-1475 or 786-448-0083. And I'm happy to respond to the false allegations that are from my uh, opponent. I will say this. Um, I had about 1,800 signatures that I worked very hard to get. And it wasn't sending out a postcard with a picture of Trump and postage paid return. I had over 1,300 voters that had direct contact with me for their signature. I wanted to make sure that they knew who they were signing to get on that ballot. And I think that speaks volumes. While I missed it by 26, I'm probably the only candidate that got all of those petitions by direct contact with voters. And that segues to what I wanna end with. Endorsements are nice, but at the end of the day, the only endorsements we need, I need, is from the voters. So I hope voters have had enough time to get to know me, have seen that I'm transparent, I don't hide anything, I don't use socialist tainted money, my campaign account has been by family, friends, and people that believe in me. And I would not spend one penny of that money, which I have been entrusted with from other people, to run a smear campaign. My campaign has been about my merit, my strengths, that I'm a strong conservative woman who stands on my own two feet. And I have carried this campaign by myself. I haven't had my husband jump in. I haven't had um, any other politician jump in to run the race for me. It's been me. Because I want you to know that when I get to Tallahassee for all of us, I can do the job. I don't have to rely on anyone other than our lo local officials and people that are part of that team. So thank you. Thank you, BPW, for, for having this forum. I think it's, it's very important. Informed voters, like Tom says, promotes good government. Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. Right. Next, we move to Republican candidates for County Commissioner District 5. Michael P. Forster, still not been able to join us, I don't believe. No, ma'am, he's not in the room. Ma'am, all right. So, Robbie Majeska. Okay, is that raised hand right there? You missed, you missed it. You're on, Robbie, we can hear you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, District 5 of the Monroe County Commission comprises of the unincorporated areas of northern Monroe County. That's uh, Tavernier, Key Largo, and Ocean Reef. We have no city council, we have no mayors. We only have one seat on the county commission to represent us. The county commission seat should go to somebody that has lived and worked in District 5. Um, I have lived here, I've worked here, I've raised my family here. It shouldn't go to somebody that's using this as a, a political gain, and will be forced to move into the district if he gets elected. I moved to Key Largo 22 years ago to raise my family in a small community. My business, Keys Critters, has been there for 30 years serving the community. As an elected official on the Key Largo Wastewater Treatment District, I took our district, or I worked with the rest of our commissioners to bring our district debt from $80 million. We were $80 million in debt. We have $10 million in surplus in the bank today, and we just lowered everybody's rate by 15%. Not only that, we just started a fully funded $2 million solar power plant that's going to save us $150,000 a year in electric bills. I don't vote to continually overspend and raise taxes. I work and vote to lower taxes. I, like Alexandra, my family is the one that's supporting me and my personal friends are the ones supporting me. I have not taken a lot of campaign contributions. That's from, time is up. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you. And now we will move to Robbie Republican candidates for a state committee man, Stephen Hammond. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I appreciate it. I want to thank the BPW for allowing us this opportunity. If you are a Republican and you have not voted yet, I would appreciate your vote. I am a conservative. I am the most qualified. I have the knowledge. I have a business degree with a concentration in finance and economics and an MBA and have worked for four Fortune 100 companies. As I say, if it's not broken, then you can't fix it. Be an informed voter and vote for the best choice. Please vote for Stephen Hammond for Republican State Committee man on August 18th. Thank you. Thank you. Casey Cass Shu.
Hello? Do, do we have Casey? I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Ilya, can, there you are. Just wanted to get you spotlighted. Go ahead. <laughs> I heard it. So thank you very much again for having us tonight. Um, I'm a lifelong Keys resident. Uh, I wanted to make a shout out to leadership. I saw Marjorie Smith was here, uh, class 20. Uh, it's the greatest class ever. Um, I made my Facebook profile public. So if you guys want to go and look at my Facebook profile, I think a picture is worth a thousand words and you get to really know somebody by looking through their Facebook profile. I was the co-chair of the um, Trump campaign in 2016 and the chairman for 2020. Um, and I want to switch hats here. Uh, for information on the Republican candidates, please go to keysgop.com. There's a full list of resources there. You can research all the candidates uh, and research their campaign pages. Um, please visit the Republican uh, Club's Facebook pages. There's three clubs in, the, in Monroe County, Upper Keys, Middle Keys, and Lower Keys. Um, and also we have a campaign office. The Trump campaign office is now opening in the old reporter building in Tabernier at 91655 Overseas Highway. Thank you again, DPW, Susie, and Christina. Thank you for all you guys do. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, that brings us to the end. Everyone back on gallery view here. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you to all of the candidates for taking the time to come and speak to us tonight. We really appreciate this opportunity to get to know you a little better and hear from you and provide this opportunity to our members to, to be able to meet you. So thanks everyone for attending. Special thanks to everyone who chose the paid level of registration for this evening's event. If you chose the highest level, you will be mentioned in the newsletter and you do receive one free e-blast. So if you did the $50 registration tonight, please get with me and we will get that e-blast sent out to our 400 to 500 contacts that we currently have. So thank you for that. All of that money goes to our adult scholarship program and helps us benefit worthy women and our community. Please check out our website, uppercasebpw.org for our upcoming events. We have a lot going on in the next month or so, so don't miss out on any of the excitement. Thanks again to the Public Policy Committee. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for my lovely assistance tonight. Please be sure that you vote on the, in the primary elections next Tuesday, August 18th. We have so many worthy candidates as you've seen tonight. Just please vote. So thank you again, and I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Good night.